What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. So tomorrow is Thanksgiving and since it's a holiday, a lot of people are taking off, but we will still have Newswave during Thanksgiving because I usually work on them the day before. It's going to more so be Friday where there won't be a Newswave in the morning. However, I have something else actually lined up for that morning for you guys because, yeah, I went out and I picked up a uh, refer a premium refurbished PlayStation 3, one of the older large models from GameStop, and I figured we could check that out since the 360 went over so well and it was such high quality. Maybe we should take a look at the other side of the coin and see what the PS3 refurbished systems look like. So look out for that Friday morning for you guys. Today, though, we have a whole bunch of stuff to get into because the MPDs did get released for October. That did include the matchup between Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption 2. And, uh, well, you might be a little surprised, actually, as to which game came out on top. And then we also have to go over the update 6.2.0 for the Switch, which came out and was stability updates. However, it turns out, according to hackers, it was actually a bit more than just the quote-unquote stability. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button. It does really help out with YouTube and everything. We're going to start with some quick news, and we're going to start right away with Kingdom Hearts 3, because development has wrapped. It's done. The game is actually coming out. It doesn't look like it's getting delayed again or anything like that. This is actually put out in a post on Twitter from Tetsuya Nomura himself. Yes, it's done. I can't believe it. I can't believe it's actually coming out. Kingdom Hearts 3, which I guess has been talked about, of course, since Kingdom Hearts 2 came out back in 2005. Now, we've had a ton of games obviously come out since then, but is the next numbered series, although it'd be, I guess, a sequel to one of the other games that's come out since then. But still, a big, big time announcement there because a lot of people are in the mindset that they won't believe that it's actually out and that it actually exists until they're holding it in their hands because you never know, last minute delay, things like that. But it looks like after it wrapping up and new trailer coming out, yeah, end of January, Kingdom Hearts 3. It's been uh, f f almost six years in development now since we first saw it, so it's been a, lo a long, wild ride, but it's finally going to end January. Also, Steam is discontinuing their Steam link, at least the current one. They put out a post over on their Steam community board talking about how it's sold out in Europe and it's just about sold out in the US. And Steam links are obscenely cheap. I think at one point they were like five bucks or something very recently. And a Steam link is basically a little box that you can put away from your uh, computer, whether it's upstairs in like a living room and maybe your, maybe your computer is uh, downstairs in the basement or something. And you want to be able to play your games on another TV, but still using your computer that's downstairs, you would hook up a Steam Link uh, controller, and then you could play it in a, on a different TV without too much issue. Too much, I say, because you want to make sure it's wired and everything looks good from a network side, but generally it worked all right. It just didn't really catch on as well as I think Valve would have wanted it to, and a lot of people, I think, are also asking for a 4K variant, which could be what they're working on now because the Steam Link, of course, is still something sold directly through them and it does, I guess, help promote Steam and, and just their overall ecosystem. So I wouldn't be shocked if another Steam Link came out and it was a 4K Steam Link, but if they don't, the Steam Link is done, I guess. It's, it's finished, quietly discontinued, you could say, and I guess if you still want one, you might want to pick one up now before it's completely impossible to find. Also, it looks like OutRun is releasing on the Switch in the Sega Ages collection this year. Sega has now said it's coming out at some point this year, before the end of the year, and they actually told us about a bunch of features that are going to be with it. 60 frames per second, it will have that. It'll support widescreen and gyro control which is kind of neat, I guess, to have gyro control attached to it. Of course, when you're driving, you can, I guess, just turn the wheel or would be your little Joy-Con controller and everything, or maybe even your Pro Controller maybe could be turned. Uh, but at that point, I guess you don't really need the Pro Controller as much as if you're turning, you just need buttons. But OutRun, the, the next, I guess, uh, next game in the Sega Ages lineup coming sometime before the end of the year. It could be, it could be, I guess, like right at the end of December even, so we'll see. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's jump into some of the bigger stuff. We're starting right away with the NPD sales. Now, these are all the sales in the United States, and it generally tracks digital and like physical, but not for every brand. For example, Nintendo doesn't share their eShop sales, so all of the, their stuff is just physical. I believe Activision Blizzard doesn't share things like their uh, their their PC digital sales through Battle.net. So it is kind of hit or miss. They do try to mark it with asterisk, which when we look at the list, I will kind of point out what each one means and what digital is not counted and what digital is counted. But of course, this saw the release 
of some big hitters for the holiday. That includes Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption 2, two games that I expect to sell very well throughout the holiday, even outside of October. So going into November, December, yeah, obviously people are going to go to the store and be like, yeah, I'm going to get Call of Duty or yeah, I'm going to get Red Dead Redemption 2. That's not an issue. But they still had to kind of go up against each other. Remember, we had Call of Duty release earlier in the month, so it had more time to sell, whereas Red Dead Redemption 2 released basically at the end of the month. However, we did hear that Red Dead Redemption 2 had a massive opening, but we heard Call of Duty did pretty well too. So, who do you think took the top spot between Red Dead and Call of Duty? Well, it was Call of Duty, actually. Yeah, Call of Duty and Red Dead Redemption 2 are already the top two selling games of 2018. Just like that. That is how powerful both of those brands are. Now, Call of Duty, of course, comes out every year, so I do think it's kind of more impressive that that game is still that powerful despite it coming out every single year. Of course, it's different studios, different ideas around the Call of Duty brand, whether it's World War II or uh, Black Ops, just straight up Black Ops 4. Uh, no campaign. In fact, it was actually made a point that the fact that there's no campaign there didn't seem to affect sales at all. It, it did great. It, it, this, is, this is a very, very strong opening month for Call of Duty. Topping the charts, topping the year instantly, and yes, beating out Red Dead Redemption 2. How about we take a look at the top games here you're going to see on the chart, and then yes, Call of Duty at the top at number one. Uh, Black Ops 4 does not count, according to them, the sales through uh, PC Digital, so the PC Digital sales, I guess, are not counted through that. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 at number two, Assassin's Creed Odyssey at number three, NBA 2K19 at four, Super Mario Party, and that is not counting the digital sales through the eShop, those are just physical sales over the counter in stores. Soul Calibur 6, actually a pretty good opening there for Soul Calibur, a fighting game at number six, uh, FIFA 19 at seven. Marvel's Spider-Man at 8, Madden NFL 19 at 9, and then WWE 2K19 number 10. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 topped the charts for each individual software sale on both the PS4 and the Xbox One. And as for the Switch, it was Super Mario Party that actually topped that chart with, with Mario Kart 8 following up right behind it. I keep telling you guys, Mario Kart 8 will probably catch Mario Odyssey for Nintendo's best-selling game so far in the Switch's lifespan, and I think that's going to happen uh, probably in the next few quarters. You're going to see it slowly overtake it. As for the hardware, the PlayStation 4 was the top-selling console in October. I think that's kind of expected with the marketing they have with Red Dead, and of course, a lot of people will just buy a PlayStation 4 if they want to get like a Call of Duty game or something. It, it the, Definitely the marketing helped absolutely for Red Dead with their bundle, and this is the best selling, so get this, this is the best selling month for October for PlayStation in terms of units sold dating all the way back to 2002. As for dollar sales dating back to October 2014, because keep in mind the PS4 is cheaper now than it was in 2014. And obviously going all the way back to the PlayStation 2 in October 2002 for units sold is very, very impressive for the PlayStation. Doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Seems to be picking up steam even more so now as we go forward. In fact, if you compare October 2017 to this year, October 2018, sales were up 73% to $1.5 billion. That's insane. So yeah, yeah, gaming is, is gaming's all right. Red Dead Redemption 2 obviously helped out. Massive, massive sales right there. As for the Switch, it appears that it's it's actually downturning a bit from last October, but it makes sense if you really think about what, ca what came out at the end of October. Yeah, Mario Odyssey. Mario Odyssey sold an obscene amount of copies. What, like 9 million in its first, like, 30 days or 40 days on the market. So that makes sense why it would have a bit of a downturn in October as opposed to last year. But keep in mind, Pokemon is November, Smash is December, so they're looking to make it up in those two months going into the holiday. And I think they will. I think Smash is going to be pretty massive. Pokemon split between two different SKUs, so that will show up two different spots, I believe, in the... Uh, unless they, they might want to count them as, as just one, maybe. But that'll show up probably as two different slots in the November MPD. Either way, Call of Duty, that's how powerful Call of Duty is. I tell you guys every year. It's so strong of a seller that even Red Dead Redemption 2, despite being at the end of the month, still couldn't knock it off of its throne. The big question now is, will Red Dead Redemption 2 be able to take November? Because otherwise, that means that Red Dead would come out and not be able to take an MPD at all. It's a massive seller, obviously, but still, it wasn't able to take an MPD if that's the case. We'll see what happens in November, but Pokemon might throw a monkey wrench in that whole situation, but we'll have to see. 
Either way, tons of money coming in for video games. The PlayStation 4 at the top in terms of dollar sales and units sold, and Call of Duty taking the top spot in terms of games. Next up, Warframe is now out on the Nintendo Switch. Dropped yesterday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and people started downloading, and I saw it started to pop up all over Twitter and even on their Reddits and everything. It runs well. I played it, uh, did some work on there, checked it out and everything. It does run very well, and it's actually surprising, I guess, for a lot of people to see that, although Panic Button has been doing some good work. Now, I noticed looking at it, it, it is a bit blurrier than the other versions, which makes sense. I, I think we, we kind of understand at this point. 30 frames per second seems to be the cap, and it does struggle at times, but for the most part, it's it's pretty solid. Now, we're going to be doing a full video on this, Evan and myself, because I have to get Evan involved here because he knows Warframe like the back of his hand. He's played so much of this game. So he's going to run me through some missions, explain some stuff to me, and I think it's going to be pretty cool, and I'll share a little bit more with you guys as we get closer to that. But I also took a look through the options menu. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go through all this uh, in that video because the options menu is obscene. There is so much stuff. If you have not looked through the options menu in Warframe on your Switch yet, go check it out. You can do different keybinds. They have different color palettes for if, you, if you're colorblind. There is so much stuff. You can change all of the graphical settings, which you can do with the other versions, but the fact that Panic Button took all of that stuff and moved it all over so well is very, very impressive. Pretty cool to see. I'm going to play more of it. Like I said, keep an eye out for a video coming from Evan and myself where we kind of run through it and hopefully give you guys a bit more insight into the game because one thing that I've seen from people when we did the five tips to, to help you out when you're getting started in Warframe, it seemed overwhelming to a lot of people and I kind of want to work to uh, to fix that and get people more comfortable with the game because uh, Evan will tell you himself the game is very good it's it's come a long way and it's gonna be pretty interesting to uh, to check it out and see how it kind of evolves and how people on the switch uh, kind of respond to it. And then in our last bit of news, let's talk about the update that came out firmware 6.2.0 on the Nintendo switch and it seemed to just kind of come out and it said, okay, general stability, that's fine. We kind of had 6.1 that was pretty much the same thing and no one really said much about it because not much changed. However, 6.2 seems to have changed a lot for the hacking and homebrew community. Not so much for people who are just playing their Switch normally and aren't into that. Uh, you probably downloaded it and was like, okay, 6.2, the little number went up one. Much different in the hacking scene. Michael uh, Shires actually uh, took to Twitter, talked about this a bit, and uh, mentioned that a lot of things seem to have moved around. A lot, actually. And it seems like all of the homebrew and hacking stuff that's going on right now will need to be changed, altered, and updated because Nintendo just kind of moved everything completely and broke a lot of code. Over on GBA Temp, there was a long post put up by Stargazer Tom talking about the exact same thing, mostly talking about incompatible firmware with the incompatible uh, custom firmware solution, files strewn all over the place, new key generation method, just basically everything to kind of mess up all of the, uh, the code right now for custom firmware. Now, they do also mention, keep in mind, the RCM or the Tegra recovery mode, that's pretty much unpatchable. So that's not really going away on any of the older Switch models. The newer ones, of course, are kind of kind of pushing that out now, cycling that out. But the older ones will pretty much always be able to take advantage of that. However, Nintendo can, I guess, keep making it difficult for people who are modifying, hacking, and running homebrew on their Switch by basically making the custom firmware incompatible that they are running. So no, it doesn't look like Nintendo forgot about them. And I guess they're just going to keep making it hard for the, keep throwing, like I said, monkey wrenches into the, into the situation to make it harder. I guess if you just don't update, you probably won't have any issues. And that's pretty much what they're going with right now. Don't update the 6.2 until they work to fix it. But one thing's for sure, a small update from one to two can mess with things this much overnight. So it, like I said, Nintendo will keep at it. It's gonna be more interesting, I think, when the Switch becomes legacy years later and it doesn't really get updates anymore because then they won't have to scramble as much to fix just a what appeared to us to be a very small, minute detail with the update, and it ends up being a whole thing. My gem is going to do it here for Newsway. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure to hit the like button. It does help out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today. Whether it is the MPDs, are you surprised that it was Call of Duty that took the top spot? Were you expecting Red Dead Redemption 2? I think a lot of people expected the PlayStation 4 to take the top spot with Red Dead coming out and the marketing and everything there. Let me know what you think about those results 
at that point. And, and what about 6.2? Are you are you surprised that so much changed behind the scenes without even really being able to notice? I mean, we've seen this before going from going to 5.0 did a lot to change things up too. And then are you excited for Kingdom Hearts 3? The development's done. I guess it's going gold at this point and it is coming out. It looks like January and it's, uh, it's exciting stuff. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.